Kia ora! My name is Binibining Veronica. On this video, I'll talk about my experience working from an aged care facility to a public hospital here in New Zealand. So, I am a registered nurse from the Philippines and I've been living in New Zealand for the last 8 years working as a registered nurse. And on this channel, I talk about nursing and life in New Zealand. So, if you're new here, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. Salamat po! After working in the aged care sector for nearly two years, some traveling and receiving my New Zealand resident visa, I started applying for job vacancies in public hospitals. I initially struggled to get shortlisted and even when I finally got interviewed, I still got rejected. So I decided to just hit pause on my application to reflect on how I can better increase my chances of getting accepted. If you are also struggling with your job application, I created a video on how to deal with job rejections and how to make the most out of that experience. And you can watch it right here. After updating my CV, editing my cover letter, and practicing for the interview, I finally got a job offer from a public hospital. Along with the work contract and job description, I also receive a pre-employment health screening questionnaire which asks about general information, medical history, psychosocial health history, physical hazards, hazardous substances, muscular or skeletal hazards, MRSA swab result, BCG or TB immunization status, and other infectious disease. Now again, our experiences will be different and that's okay. I am just sharing the things that I had to complete before I could start my work in a public hospital. Your employer may ask you for something similar or they may ask you for something different, okay? By the way, I really enjoy reading your stories as well. So if you are currently working in an aged care facility and you are thinking of moving to a private or public hospital, please let me know in the comment section below. Moving on! The orientation pack that I received also included an employee orientation and information booklet, shared expectation booklet, clinical checklist, information about ACC, annual leave, leave leave, and sick leave, introduction to KiwiSaver, and some information about banking and health insurance. There was also a checklist summary of online learning that I needed to complete within the first four weeks of starting my job and more information about policies and protocols. For the first week of my orientation, I attended an organizational orientation session, IT or IS training, and then the following week, I attended a ward or unit orientation. I was partnered with a senior nurse in the morning, afternoon, and night shift, and they showed me what the usual routine was like. Before I talk about the usual routine, staff, and patient allocation, if you are enjoying this video, please hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you'll know when I upload new videos just like this one. For your reference, the ward that I transferred into provided interdisciplinary approach to adult rehabilitation, geriatric care, and acute stroke management, so that's the patient cohort. The average staff patient allocation on a morning and afternoon shift was one nurse to six to seven patients, and there was a healthcare assistant assigned to 12 patients. On a night shift, the average staff patient allocation was one nurse and one HCA to about 15 patients. On the other hand, common nursing interventions included vital signs, observation, and monitoring, including neurological observations for our acute stroke patients, taking patients' way, ECG, telemetry monitoring, admitting, transferring, and discharging patients, and that included completing an A to D planner, nursing care plan, and sending relevant referrals. Other interventions included assisting with patients' ADL, administering medication, NGT insertion and removal, enteral feeding and medication administration, wound dressing, moving and handling, infection prevention and control, and facilitating and promoting rehabilitation. You know, just the usual stuff we do. And just a quick note, if you are starting a job in a public hospital, you just have to remember you have to get certification and training for generic IV administration, blood sampling, IV cannulation, and male catheterization. 
So this means that once you are working in the wards, you can catheterize female patients if it's clinically needed and you're comfortable to do so, but you have to have training and you need to get certified in order to catheterize male patients. All right? For me, the first three to six months at work was really challenging because I am new to the unit, I didn't know where things were, and I had to build new work relationships. I also had to learn how to use applications such as Trendcare, VRM, CIS, and many others. There is also a list of forms that we have to complete per patient per shift, and it is a faster-paced environment compared to aged residential care, at least in my experience anyway. All in all, it was quite a steep learning curve for me, transitioning from working from an aged care facility to a public hospital was initially quite difficult for me, but fortunately, I was supported and surrounded by great colleagues. Some of them used to work in an aged care facility as well before transferring to the ward, so they were very understanding and helpful. Moving to a public hospital was actually a good career move for me. And the people who I used to work with in aged care actually pushed me to apply and change jobs. I don't know, maybe they don't want to work here. Veronica Mais is here. I'm But yeah, um, based on my experience, the salary, especially the penal rate um, in an evening, night shift, weekends, and holidays, and the workload is better in the public hospital setting. At least, like I said, in my experience. There was also more opportunity for me to attend training, study days, conferences, and pursue a senior designated nursing role. In fact, in 2016, I became a clinical nurse specialist for stroke. But I'll tell you more about that in my next video. For now, I just want to thank everyone for liking, commenting, and sharing my videos. As always, I wish you all the best with your journey and I hope you will be blessed. I'll see you soon. Bye!